All right, the fuel cell is back. We had some 3 8 hard lines put on it. So um, this is the feed line. Feed comes into the re regulator this way. This is the return line. And then this is the feed out, which is stepped onto a dash 4. We also converted this from a dash 4 AN to a hose barb. This is the vacuum reference, and then we'll put a gauge on it. So this will actually sit nicely in the Forester. Um, you'll be able to read the gauge, and then the line's just going to loop over a little bit and go to the solenoid, which will be on this side of the car, and the thing will sit right there, so it'll be a nice and short runner. Uh, so that part's all done. Now we have to uh, mock up the lines for the last solenoid, which is for the fueling. So we will need to put our jets in the other side of those fittings, and then bend some more lines to go to this one. This one, like I said before, is gonna sit over here. So um, throw you on the time lapse and do some of that. We also got some of the fittings we needed in to uh, finish the splitter for the fuel line and then the elbows for the fuel pressure regulator, but we won't install these till we get it in the car. All right, you guys just saw me put together the last solenoid. So this is what we're working with here. Didn't turn out quite as good as I wanted, but I've never done this before. So it was kind of hard, like this line's not perfect right there. Um, I did lose one olive. Uh, this one popped out down here, so I do need to order another one of those, but the lines are ready to go uh, and they're pretty snugged up. So this works pretty good. This solenoid kind of hangs out in the back. Everything else is pretty good. Um, it's decent. I mean, I could probably make it perfect if I had more time and more than one bender, but no one's going to see this. Everything kind of flows nicely, so I think we're going to leave it there, and then if I ever do it again, I will uh, do a better job on it, but it should work. So I'm going to set this on there and make sure there's clearance, and then I'll show you what it's like, and I'm going to see how long this video is. I'll either close it out there or I'll throw the ends on here to get that T on. Okay, I put the manifold back on so you can see those jets down there, we got plenty of clearance around our hoses. They come over here nice. And then the solenoid, so the view from up top, you can basically just see a little bit of wiring. Solenoids are back there. And then I really like the placement of the fueling one. So fuel in comes right there. So our fuel cell will be right there. And then uh, kind of sneaks in the back. And then from the back, you can see some goodies, but it's pretty hidden. I'd say in the engine bay with these wires out of the way, you're hardly going to notice those solenoids there. All right, guys. This is the part we have been waiting for since September to finish this Forester. This motor has been sitting here ready to go in and we have been waiting on the clutch for six months. This is an Exidy triple disc racing clutch. It's the strongest one that you can get for a Subaru, I'm pretty sure. Um, unfortunately, we can't go with a single face clutch with this much power. I don't really like the chatter that the multiple discs have but this is supposed to be the best one so it came with all this cool stuff uh, it actually comes with arp hardened bolts for the flywheel and uh, this thing is a work of art so it did take a lot long time but it is beautiful um, i already opened it up just to make sure that it was right since we waited so long but i wanted to give you guys kind of the unboxing here so purple looks nice 
It's pretty heavy, obviously. It has three clutches and three metal discs and this locking cog thing here. So, uh, and it's all balanced. You can see the paint marks down there. So this thing is pretty incredible. Um, not really gonna handle it too much, but I will show you guys side view of it. You can see the discs in there. Looks really nice. So, apologize for the lack of forester content. Um, we had sandblast and a few other things, so I thought I'd switch it up. We were kind of hitting you hard with forester videos for a few weeks there. Since we had been stocking up all these parts, we could actually build it. So, let's kind of get you guys up to speed since uh, the clips you saw earlier are kind of out of whack. So, we were in the middle of finishing this motor up, doing the nitrous piping and whatnot, and then I mentioned that we were going to be waiting on the clutch. Well, the clutch came in, um, but I got busy getting ready for sandblast. I released the sandblast footage, all the individual stages, and then um, I decided that... Uh, I had a couple other things to do. I had a couple customer cars in and whatnot, and there's some things I want to do on the Forester before we put the motor in. So as I mentioned before, we have the fuel cell here that we need to, um, I just basically need to make some brackets to hold this in place. And then that's ready to go, which involves moving the battery to the trunk. And uh, since this is kind of cluttered right now, there's a couple other things I got to do. I need to move this brake distribution block or the brake bias controller down here so that it's away from the turbo and it doesn't boil the brakes. So I'm just gonna unplug it here, put some unions on there with some braided lines, come down and relocate it here, and then I'll just bend these lines down and these lines back. Um, or excuse me, these lines this way and those down. Also, got a set of yellow speed racing coilovers. That one was seized. It has taken me almost two months to get a hold of them and get a replacement coilover. So three sides of the car are done. This side, which is the frozen one, they wouldn't fix it or take it in to see if they could repair it. I had to buy a new one. So I've been waiting on that. Uh, it seems like this thing is never ending wait. So then uh, I got a little bit of time between customer cars a week ago and we decided to try to fit up this Forester STI bumper. As you can see, I have the initial cut in it. I apologize for not recording it. Tim and I spent two, three hours just kind of cutting it a little bit at a time and mocking it up, getting the uh, intercooler pipes mocked up. The good news is this bumper has plenty of clearance back here. The bad news is it's a fiberglass bumper and it didn't come with any instructions and it also wasn't made to have a five inch intercooler core. So we had difficulty figuring out which headlight trims we needed to use. The grill didn't want to match up. The grill's over here. The stock one doesn't want to work with these spats. If I, or not spats, headlight trims. If I switch those back to stock, it doesn't sit on the bumper right. So I've been kind of humming and hawing with this for a bit. Finally realized that I needed to put spacers on the intercooler. So I got this three quarter inch pieces of aluminum. I just tapped them for some M8 by 125 bolts. And that allows me to bolt it in here and here. Um, problem is the bumper is spread out a little bit. So if I tuck the sides in, it pushes the front forward and up and it doesn't look right. So first thing is I need to get this centered on here, bolt that in place and then put some heat to it and then tuck the sides in. So with this, with these, it lines up perfectly with the things. Um, the grill still doesn't fit. I posted online. Seems like maybe I got the wrong grill. I haven't been able to get a hold of the guy. This kid is from Forrester Parts on Instagram. I haven't been able to get a hold of him, so I don't know if he sent me the wrong grill, but I can drive around without the grill while we're figuring that out. So the plan is I got the cut done. I'm gonna sand it up and make it nice and clean, but the cut is nice. I have enough room to mesh in front of it, which will match the uh, hood scoop delete and the mesh in the grill if I can ever get that to fit. So I'm gonna put this on there, bolt it in, and then I'm gonna apply some heat and try to get the sides bolted in. And then I'm gonna leave it on the car for a week or two while I'm waiting on the coil over to come in, which just shipped today, finally. That way it can kind of get into place. And then when I get it painted, I don't have to force it and possibly crack the paint. So this will all be paint matched, obviously, but I wanted to get it on there first. So. I also just got in the last component to relocate the battery. I was I got a circuit breaker so I can put it in the trunk. This is the same one we run in the rally car. And then um, I was having trouble finding single post 
distribution blocks. So I ended up having to order a four post one and it didn't really want to fit and it was kind of big. And then I finally found these on Amazon. They're, you know, insulated at the bottom. You screw them in and they have a cover on them. I didn't want to run no cover. So this is a three eighth stud with a cover. So basically the things that go to the positive terminal are just going to loop back and connect to this and I'm going to hide it under the where the washer squirter used to be or on the frame rail this is pretty small so i can either put it like right here or i can hide it down here but basically these two wires from the battery terminal are just going to go to this and then one big battery cable off of this is going to go through the car to the trunk the negative side i'm going to cut this terminal off and just have the ground to the body and then i'm going to ground the battery to the chassis in the trunk and then that way i can get rid of this cluster of wires here See, this is the four post one that I used on the rally car um, because I couldn't find a single post or a two post with a cover, but I just found these. So this is a lot smaller than that. So that's where we're at. Uh, I'm going to mock the bumper up and get a little bit more footage for you, and then I'll probably wrap up this video. Um, let me know what you guys think about the YouTube videos. At the beginning of the year, I wanted to make the commitment to uh, put out videos weekly or bi-weekly for the year and kind of see where it took us because we weren't getting a lot of views on youtube um that being said we're i've been putting out videos weekly and i've been having some help making the videos to save myself time and we're still not getting a lot of views on them which that's okay if uh if the content's not great i'm just debating whether i want to keep going with the youtube thing or not so let me know what you guys think uh maybe i'm just filming stuff that isn't interesting to you guys or whatnot but honestly with it being so busy around here sometimes we just need to get customer cars done and get them out of here and we really only have time to film the forester build and the rally car so let me know if there's something that you guys would like to see in filming i know our most popular videos were the six speed transmission teardown and the motor build obviously that's not something that we can do you know weekly because these are twenty thousand dollar motors but uh if we get a customer one in we can record it as well if you want so let me know. Um, all right, let's get back to working on the bumper. Enough jibber jabber, we'll get to work. Okay, it's on. It actually looks pretty awesome. So the cut in the middle, uh, that's where the license plate indentation was from cars that need your front license plate. And I thought, well, I don't wanna cut a huge hole in the bumper because this STI bumper looks really nice and it hides my intercooler pipes really well in there. She can't even really see since we're going for a sleeper look so i cut that for now and then when we're tuning i'll keep an eye on the intake air temps worst case scenario i can do some speed holes here and here uh not worst case scenario next step would be speed holes there and there worst case scenario i'd be coming over with it and just cutting it down because i can mesh in front of this but it really doesn't block off a ton of this intercooler like the intercooler does go to like about here but um these flaps aren't too bad and i could make some directional flaps in here it's a five inch core it's still gonna get a lot of air so i think it'll be okay but we'll see um but yeah i actually got it to fit up pretty good it's kind of been out of shape from shipping so i'm gonna leave it sit like this for a week or so like i said uh but i'm pretty happy with those gaps there's you know like these don't have the clips on them right now so this will come down a little bit and uh, they don't even the factory ones don't sit like perfectly flush it looks pretty good around to the side um i can put the bolt a little bit tighter to tighten that gap up but it looks pretty good and then over here this bolt is just in there loosely as well it can go tighter um i just have this tape because i don't have that barb thing that goes in there and i wanted to match the crease so i think it looks pretty good um for a fiberglass bumper, you know, that didn't come on this car, I like it. It looks pretty sleek with the roof scoop delete. Uh, if I can get the right grill in and the grills mesh with no logo, then I think it's going to look really good. Yeah, I like that. Side profiles, pretty cool as well. I think that'll work. So, um, I just put two bolts in, like I said. Uh, I can get shallow top ones if they're gonna hit the grill, but the grill should sit on top of this lip and the bolt is about the same height as the lip anyway, so Shouldn't be an issue um, 
but the grill doesn't even want to fit between these so i'm thinking i got a usdm grill and this is a jdm sti bumper so we'll see uh what the guy says um i am going to paint this bracket black because you'll see that through the mesh grill i'm not going to paint the intercooler because i'm going to black mesh in front of it but that fits pretty good. Um, I do want to sand the bumper and get the fitment better, but I don't want to take it off right now since I just bolted it up. So I'm probably going to leave it sit like that for a bit and then move on to relocating the battery and just kind of let this thing sit for a while. It's going to be like 80 degrees or so for the next few days. And I want it to form into shape and then I will get it painted probably right about the time we're ready to fire this motor up so I can throw it on and be done with it. So. All right, guys, uh, we're going to wrap it up for today's video. Um, <clears throat> once again, the saga of not being able to get things done because I got to order parts continues with this car. So what we did was we m moved the uh, terminal post, sorry about the camera, to down there, as you can see. Kind of hit it below the, this is the other view, it's kind of below the brake master, and it's got a nice cover on it. So basically all I did was tie up the, I undid the positive terminal, took it off, and then the one that goes to the starter and the battery terminal, I took them apart and made them straight, um, widened up the holes a little bit, got them on those posts, zip tied it all together, tucked it under the ABS plug there, that brown one, then the uh, ground wire that goes to the starter, I zip tied to the same bracket, came up here, just tucked the terminal underneath the fuse box for now, since you can't really see it. So it actually looks pretty good over here now. Um, I wish we could have painted the engine bay and stuff like this. I can wipe this down and make it a little bit cleaner, but it would have been nice to paint the engine bay and have everything purely white. There's still room to put a uh, squirter bottle in there if I want to. I just tucked those wires up out of the way as well. So basically uh, under the engine bay here, everything's done for the relocation except for the big battery cable needs to go on that terminal post down there. But I don't have the hydraulic crimper yet from a friend, so I need to get that. And then the rest of the work will be in the back of the car. I started putting the clutch master cylinder and everything in, and I realized I'm missing the banjo to go to the slave cylinder, so that's going to have to wait, of course. Um, that was a piece I was telling you about. But pretty successful. Um, bumpers in, headlight trims are in, everything's fitting pretty good. This, uh, this just needs a little L bracket down there to hold it in place because I can't go forward or backwards anyways just needs to keep it from tipping it actually fits in there really good because the ac line bumps up against that but that'll be sitting higher so these wires are all going in the engine uh for monitors and stuff which kind of makes that area over there pretty clean and then next i'll tackle over here with the boost control solenoid and whatnot so um i think we're gonna wrap it there for today Thanks for, thank you guys for watching. As I said, let me know uh, what would make you more interested in the videos, if I can cover something else. Also, check out our Bonfire uh, website. It's bonfire.com slash bankrupt motorsports. We have a few shirts for sale, and I also have a bunch of key tags for sale. I don't know if I have one right here, uh, but they turn out pretty nice as well. So um, get some merch if you want to support us. Everybody else that's already supported us, I appreciate it. And uh, in the next episode... For the Forester, I'm sure we will be putting the motor in, which will be exciting. I'm not sure if that's going to come out next week or a few weeks from now. I do need to get some stuff done on the rally car because um, it is like March 30th right now. And in four weeks we have the gravel rally and then every three weeks we have another rally. So we got a lot of stuff to do. So until next time, guys, take it easy.